by way of introducing me, that's I'll keep it simple like that. I grew up on a, a farm. My uh, folks were farmers. We were sustainable, self-sustainable. My mom had a garden. We raised what we ate. We had a milk cow for our milk. And we had eggs from our own hens. And my dad was a cattle farmer. And later on, when the feeder pig industry was still part of this area, he raised feeder pigs. But um, they both passed away several years ago. And my husband and I live on the farm, but we both work outside in the community. And so we're currently not working as farmers, but we keep saying one of these days we're going to get back to that because we really do love farming life. I believe that the reason I oppose, the biggest reason I oppose this amendment is because it is not for small farmers. It is for industrial farms as much as anything, and I really believe that to be true. There are a lot of opinions about this amendment, and um, there are lots of facts floating around too, lots of information. If any of you are tech savvy, if you go online, I would encourage you to really investigate all sides of the issue. But I believe it is so vaguely worded that it accomplishes very little that would be good, and it's going to accomplish a lot that is going to open up all kinds of lawsuits, all kinds of vagaries. I just think it is not a solid piece of legislation. I think it was vaguely worded probably on purpose by the people who initiated it, and we're going to talk about the people who initiated it in a little bit. Um, it, um, you know, Missouri farmers are, have always been the heart of our economy, and small farmers are who we need to protect, not industrial agriculture. Missouri farmers are already protected from foreign corporations um, owning extensive farmland and operating ranches in our state. And there is a, a lot of opinion, and I believe it to be true, that if this amendment were to pass, that those protections would be taken away. One Chinese company has already purchased 50,000 acres in the state of Missouri, and we do not want that to continue. That is a trend that is not a good trend. We want our farmland to be retained in ownership by Missouri farmers, by Missouri citizens. And one of the disturbing parts about this piece of legislation, about this amendment, is the ballot language says it protects Missouri citizens. But if you read what the actual amendment says, it doesn't say Missouri citizens. I read it on the way down here. I pulled it up on the phone, and it just talks about farmers and ranchers. And for me, that is too vague. Even though the ballot summary says Missouri citizens, it's very much a concern to me that it will extend well beyond that. Um, Alan, my husband, who's with me this evening, we had an opportunity to um, go to a meeting early on about a group that is opposed to this amendment, and there was a gentleman there by the name of Dr. John Eichert, and he has spent 50 years um, in agriculture as a career. He started out being a defender of big ag, and he realized as time went on that that was not the way, that would be the best way for farming to go forward in this country. And he came back around and realized that family farms and uh, family ranching is really the way to go, not corporate farms. And he has um, come up with a list of reasons why he opposes the right to farm amendment. And he points out that agriculture producers already have, uh, they benefit from special right to farm legislation in all agriculture states. Um, people that come in from the city can't just buy land next to a farmer and then suddenly start complaining about the smell. Farmers are already protected from that, and so that's not what this is addressing. Um, right farm amendments are really uh, just kind of the latest round of tactics by corporate industrial agriculture to protect itself from growing public outrage because the public is starting to realize that a lot of the things that Monsanto has to offer, I say Monsanto a lot, but there's 
there's certainly other corporate farming, industrial corporate farming interests that are not on the side of small farmers. They're on the side of big ag, and that I don't believe applies to anybody in this room. I would be surprised if it does. Industrial agriculture has not reduced retail prices of meat, milk, or eggs in the past 20 years, and about 30% of U.S. production is now diverted to exports, keeping food prices high for Americans. And it's driven many independent producers off their farms and destroyed economies in rural communities. And that's what we're looking at. We're not looking at protecting those small farms in our traditional rural communities. We are really looking at protecting big ag. I just don't see any other way around it. It would be, that would be the beneficiary from this am amendment, is the large corporately controlled industrial operations. And at the very least, as I said earlier, it's just going to lead to endless, costly litigation in which those big corporate, the big corporate, the big ag guys, they have all the money in the world to keep litigation going for as long as they have to, to win. And small farmers, you don't have any way to fight back against that. They're determined to get their way, and this is one way that they're going to do it. Any economic benefits of right to farm amendments would be reflected in an increased consumption of animal products among affluent consumers in developing countries such as China and Korea, while Americans face increased food safety and public health risks associated with the expansion of corporate <coughs> industrial agriculture. They get the benefits, we get to keep the chemical and biological waste that are the byproducts of those companies. Foreign corporations, including the largest pork, beef, and poultry processors in the U.S., would be given special constitutional rights. Foreign, foreign owned corporate farms are going to benefit from this legislation, not just American farmers. We're going to have to be looking at issues with genetically modified organisms, GMOs, we've all heard a lot about, concentrated animal feeding operations, CAFOs as they're called. We wouldn't even have a right to have, be able to take a stand against those kind of agriculture practices. One minute. I will, um, there, there are many other reasons why I think it is not a good idea, but I just want to say the final point to make is you only have to look where it originated. It did not originate with farmers. It originated with the with ALEC, American Legislative Exchange Council. And they are a group of funded by billionaires who have been trying to pass the same legislation. In, it, it's been introduced in over 30 states. And you only have to know that it originated with them to, and know that if it's good for ALEC, we're talking about billionaire corporate guys that they are not looking out for us. And Jason Smith, who was co-chair of ALEC in Missouri when he was still in the Missouri legislature, he was a co-sponsor of this bill. And so I can tell you, he's going to be looking out for the guys that have funded him to a tune of over a million dollars. His funding has come from corporate guys at over a million dollars already. So look at where it originated and think about who it truly benefits and realize we are all on the side of small farmers, but I cannot be on the side of big ag because it does not benefit us. Thank you. Thank you.